There doesn't need to be people. There doesn't need to be another generation of this game we're playing. And if the game were free, or anywhere close to free, I'd say, okay, go ahead and play your stupid game, who cares? But you know it's not. You know, to keep pretending, you know, especially talking from your non-blighted circumstance about how glorious it all is, it's just, it's just bullshit. Human beings are gonna live in, in squalor tomorrow. The game of what the average human is and how far we are from knowing what real life is and then try to calculate it into this animal world where consciousness really exists, where the bulk of consciousness is eking out an existence. That's the real permutation here. When you glorify your life and, and justify all that it's paid for it, horrible stuff. I mean, slow, suffocating death in an earthquake. These are things experienced by people that, you know, I would have to pay you an awful lot of money to go on that ride. If that ride was at Disney World, the slow, crushing death ride, I'd have to pay you a lot of money to get in that little cart. And you goddamn know it. And so don't quit pretending that this is, uh, you know, something that's so fucking free and so obviously worth the trouble when the only thing that's motivating you is complete bullshit, just perceptual needs, your perceptual desires. They're not even needs. They're, they're not even something that you'll be caused real harm. It's just perceived harm. It's just a hysterical reaction, like you broke your fingernail or something. Your fake fingernail fall off and, and you're all hysterical, but you gotta go find your fake fingernail. I mean, it's just a hysterical, immature reaction to think that there's something awful, horrible, if there's human beings on this stupid planet a thousand years from now. There's no horror. There's no, there, there, there is no crushing death. There's no loss. The only thing lost is your, your need for there to be something more. That's all we lose. We lose your need. Oh, what a horror. We lost a need. A need that doesn't need to exist. I mean, it's a simple friggin' statement in a sentence, but no one will deal with that sentence. Instead, they just ridicule the entire philosophy or ridicule the person who's uttering it. This mocking, silly rhetoric uh, that has nothing behind it beyond fairy tale. Uh, no, all the fairy tales end with happily ever after. How dare you tell us what to think? And that's the other thing. It really is the psychology, just like a religion or something. They're just going based on their majority status. Well, the rest of us believe it, you silly person. You know, there's this, just no credibility at all to the argument that because an average human being thinks they're accomplishing something, they must be accomplishing something. Pirro does this too. He, th he makes these imbecilic arguments that, uh, oh, there's no absolute truths. You know, hey, people can believe whatever the fuck they want. Well, then why don't you let people believe that there's no harm in molesting a child if that's what they believe? I mean, who are you to tell them so, right? Because nothing can be stated as a fact. It's just silly and stupid. This idea of, of, of um, the, the truth, that's the other part too, is that people, even on my own videos, when they're sort of agreeing with me, they keep saying things like, oh, there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know. There's so much we do know. I mean, this, you assholes are gonna just keep complaining forever unless somebody hands you a, a videotape with every single detail of the universe on it. You're just gonna keep whining that somehow we don't know enough to draw any conclusions. Bullshit. I mean, the evidence is in. We know where we came from. We know what all this shit is about. It's called evolution and it doesn't have any judgment. It doesn't have any brain. It's not doing anything constructive, but but forcing obliging organisms to, to chase uh, um, a completely illusionary goal so it will indirectly satisfy the primate directive, which is, yeah, just spread genes, just spread genes, spread genes, spread genes, spread genes. That's the prime directive and everything else is just a, a contrivance to manipulate the organisms in that direction. And that's the only game here. And that's what all your little needs are made out of. That's what all your little perceptions of value are made out of. You're just chasing your own hunger. You're not chasing something real. You're chasing a hunger placed inside of you. You're the one with the problem. The hunger doesn't exist in the world or in the universe. It only exists in your perception. There is no positive value except in your perception. All there is is downside risk to this game, this life 
sentient life game anyway. So again, this idea that we don't know, we don't know, we know. I mean, ask the question and there's a reasonable answer, a specific question. Every question we need to answer, we have an answer for. A solid, beyond reasonable doubt answer. So anyway, yeah, it's just very discouraging. You have to keep arguing this stuff. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll reiterate the, uh, another, I think, point that just can't get past is, is that if you were, if, if I could extract your hunger, your desire, your addiction from you, if I could take it away, your desperate need for all this bullshit, the ego crap, uh, the I need to accomplish crap, the I'm accomplishing something crap, whatever it is, I am better than I look. Whatever you're contriving in your head to find rationalizations and excuses for your mediocrity, your glorifications, yeah, you'd see no value in it. I mean, it's like taking away your, your passion for a baseball team or something, and all of a sudden, baseball is going to look really stupid. If I take away your attachment to the players, or your attachment to the team colors, or whatever else it is you're rooting for, you're not going to see anything of value in it anymore. It's just going to look stupid. It's going to look like a pointless waste of energy. Where else to go with that? That one's a good point, the whole sports analogy thing, because it really does, it does have a lot of connection to what people are doing. And, and you can sort of see that this, this is just about this stupid competitive crap. It's about picking a, an underdog, picking a value matrix thing, you know, something that you care about and um, just rooting for it. And so you people have decided to root for nature because you have a little bit of a, you know, I hate humans so I love nature kind of attitude, or I hate science therefore I love nature. Whatever the thing that's going on in your head that gives you an affection for these little parasites and monsters living out here, this reverence for it as a system, even a system that will brutalize beauty, will be as rude as rude can be to beauty in an instant. Yet you'll just glorify it. It knows what it's doing. It's and, and, and so anybody who's attacking that that thing, that Gaia monster of yours, that pet Gaia, they have these pets and they get an attachment to them, and then they'll come up with, they'll contrive all kinds of bullshit to defend what is basically a a, a dog with the brain of a dinosaur. It's just stupid. It's idiotic. It's moronic. And then these people will sit there and point their finger and mock somebody else. I mean, what a joke. Well, anyway, enough said. What if that was me? What if that was me? What if that was me?